I look forward to the day pot is legalized in this country, not due to any desire to get mad baked, or because I am secretly a wizard trying to usher in the age of Aquarius. I look forward to it because this single issue is an excellent litmus test for cultural maturity and evolution. There are two active voices in the pointless debate, the worried conservative parent and the middle-aged bearded campaigner. Unfortunately, the frightened parent is a notoriously irrational demographic, and the vocal pot enthusiast is little better. They will exchange tales of reefer madness and cancer cures, which distracts everyone from the two main points. One side wants drug harm reduced, and the other wants their free will respected. These are not zero-sum issues. The only solution for either of them, though, is decriminalization. No matter where you are on the spectrum, this is the only positive course of action. That's what the Law Commission and the UN have found anyway. My interest in this issue is what it would mean for New Zealand to end pot prohibition. It firstly requires the media to man up and take responsibility for its role in determining public opinion. News reports eagerly jump upon whether pot is involved in an incident, downplaying the roles of alcohol and pee wherever possible. TV scheduling is packed with police marauding Auckland with dogs. Toxic synthetic cannabis is allowed to dominate headlines, skewing opinions. To think these don't make an impression is naive. Secondly, people need to grow up. Too often in this country, we panic when faced with simple but uncomfortable ideas, like the so-called man ban or legal prostitution. If your only contribution to a discussion is to shout that you're unhappy and run away, you might be five. That's not constructive. Often intuition is wrong, and for pot to become legal, it would mean we as a society were confident and literate enough to make a mature decision on a difficult subject. Thirdly, it requires a bold, sovereign, and democratic government to enact such a change. Parliament is typically home to the elderly, conservative, and prejudiced. Listening to an informed populace alone would be a welcome feat, but this issue requires the government to directly contravene a dysfunctional 1980s UN convention for the benefit of its citizens. Our governments have almost always been weak-willed on the international stage, and finally overcoming this spinelessness would earn us respect and autonomy. At the moment, we are neither bold, nor smart, nor open-minded, and it's to the detriment of our country and our people. You, basically.